Hey, photographers. Uh, from time to time, a viewer asks me where a camera was made. Well, that's an interesting question. And I always wonder why you want to know. Uh, so, in a canoe, far away from the distractions of technology and the noise that pervades our urban space, I can reduce my multitasking brain to two activities, paddling and contemplating. And I am so grateful to the first inhabitants of this land who cared for it and enabled me to enjoy it today. Hmm. I, well, I can think of two reasons why the country of origin matters to you. I suspect that some of you think that if a camera, a lens, or other product is made in a specific country, uh, that somehow jeopardizes or improves its quality. I think that's wrong. The location of the plant that manufactures or assembles a device does not correlate to its quality. To think that it does is unfair generalization and potentially stereotyping. Uh, I do want to keep specific country and company names out of this discussion. Uh, it isn't about that. I'll keep my references generic. The marketplace now offers us products made all over the world. My parents' generation traveled to specific destinations, countries, and cities to get certain products or to find bargains on specialty items. Well, that's no longer true. There's very little that can't be found or purchased in any mall or from any screen, computer, phone. And while prices do differ, they are fairly standard around the world. As well, the globalization of supply chains means that any product, from hand sanitizer to automobiles, is likely made from ingredients and components sourced in multiple countries before it's assembled. Here, there, everywhere. And as a result, there are high-quality devices, manufactured all over the world, while shoddy products are being made at the factories just next door. There is no national imperative, or any cultural or other bias or predisposition to create either excellent or inferior products, nor are quality work and attention to detailed genetic traits. Quality can be created everywhere by manufacturers and employees who have been given the ability to purchase the materials and the tools required, and given the training and the time to do a job well. Uh, probably along with the ability to call in sick. The decision to create a product of a specific quality is made by executives, far away from the plant that creates the product. You now often see that on the packaging, designed here, manufactured there, from international components. The quality decision comes from the brand, which has become the driving force behind nearly all products. As much as we might like to believe that it is a company in this millennium, brands are no longer companies. They typically don't own factories. A brand employs executives, lawyers, marketers, and sometimes product managers, not the employees who are actually manufacturing and assembling the product. Uh, that is a cynical view. <laughs> well, there are a few exceptions. The concept of an integrated organization that most of us have is probably no longer valid, any more than the pastoral vision of animals grazing in a field at a family farm. Times have changed. And while brands would like us to believe in that old model, it's mostly fiction. So a product comes from a process. The brand identifies a new technology or finds a gap in the market, and decides that they could exploit that technology or market to that gap, generating revenue and hopefully profit from the sales of a particular product. A product manager defines what the product should be, and how much it will cost, and how much profit can be made from sale at a given number of units at a price with the understanding that the price may be different in various geographical areas and at different points in the product's life cycle. Those discounts are hopefully built into the product's overall margin, 
which is the difference between the cost and the selling price to calculate the profit. Now, so after the brand's executives have studied and approved the product manager's proposal, the brand takes those specifications to one or more factories they think can deliver the product. It's often a competitive bidding process. The brand's people meet with the factory's people. They may work together to create a prototype. And then the brand tells the factory what they want, usually including a bill of materials. The factory tells the brand what that will cost. Now, if the brand isn't happy with the cost, they may adjust the retail price, the quantity ordered, or the specification, which may require another round of executive approvals. Or they may ask the manufacturer how this product could be created for less. Uh, lower quality components, less experienced staff, or other adjustments may lower the cost and nearly always the quality of the final product. Although executives like to suggest that they can get better for less, the reality is that you can't do better. You can do different. Uh, the opposite, of course, is also true. The brand may indicate that the design of a component, like a shutter, uh, be more durable so that they can guarantee some aspect of the product's performance. As any project manager will be happy to tell you, you can have good, you can have fast, you can have cheap. Pick two. The brand decides which are most important. And then, assuming that both the brand and the manufacturer are reputable actors, both take the appropriate actions to make sure that the product meets the brand's quality standards. Now, the brand may also require the manufacturer to agree not to engage in practices that the brand finds objectionable or even illegal, which may include environmental and labor practices. Those standards will also come at a price. Now, I'm assuming, potentially unrealistically, that the brand's standards are consistent across their product line and that products sold in all geographical regions are identical. Uh, those are the decisions of the brand, uh, not the manufacturer or the factory. Uh, both will engage in quality assurance, testing, to verify that the product meets the brand's specifications and requirements. So the bottom line, when you receive a shoddy product, blame the brand, not the country of origin. Now, there is a second reason. For many of us, the issue isn't quality. And without diving deeply into the rationale, you or I may prefer to purchase products made close to home, supporting our friends and neighbors. That is becoming increasingly difficult. For many products, there's a single geographic source, regardless of the brand. And the components and the ingredients will come from a variety of countries. But even if it's difficult, we may choose to support our own beliefs and values with our economic decisions. Each purchase decision we make does potentially have some impact, even if it's small. The impact of your purchase is felt by the retailer, the distributor, the brand, the manufacturer, and the country or countries of origin. Uh, that includes, of course, the employees and citizens of those entities. Although individuals may share our values, their leaders may not, adding to the complexity of that decision. The impacts of our decisions are difficult to assess, so it is always best to make purchase decisions with positive intent rather than negative. It is exceedingly difficult to punish those whose ethics don't align with ours and to know that our actions are having the intended effect. A positive intent has much simpler consequences. As responsible consumers, let's reward the brands, the manufacturers, and the countries whose action aligns with ours by making our purchases with an awareness of those issues. 
So, if creating a more ethical future is your rationale, I will continue to help you identify that information in my reviews. It is worth noting that I generally receive a review unit early in the product cycle, and that brands may switch suppliers and factories over a product's lifetime. If this issue is important to you, check carefully. There is a trend for technology and other products to be very vague about the origins of a product. Labeling and packaging is not always clear. In the end, of course, the buck stops with us, and we have to take responsibility for our actions on both issues. Don't be the consumer who isn't happy to pay for a quality product, and then is somehow surprised when the cheaper product is of a lower quality, doesn't last as long, and doesn't exactly work as advertised. Or the consumer who doesn't care how a product is made, and is prepared to overlook the ethics of those who benefit from your purchase decisions. That got us from a fairly simple question to two complex issues. On quality, let's not stereotype unfairly. And on ethics, be mindful of the impact your decisions have. I know you'll have lots to say. Please remember to keep your comments relevant and civil. I reply. Uh, you may also have canoeing questions. I'll put a link in the description where I explain my technique and canoeing practices. And now, thanks for coming along for this ride. Stay safe.